usually after singing how great they are in the church, I'm, I'm the one that's sitting there with you, and I get to sit there and just tremble. <laughs> now i got to get up and do this. <laughs> it's a, kind of an awe-inspiring moment for me. <laughs> this recent confinement that we had been through, in, in no way did it subvert the work of the church. Um, thanks to the electronic media that is so accessible to us, and far-reaching. More churches than ever began broadcasting their services and keeping, their, keeping in touch with their people, but uh, the result of the outreach was much grander than we could have ever expected in our, in our short-sightedness. So many more people, even from a small pulpit like here, I got messages from across the country uh, of, uh, because of a video that was recorded on Jim's cell phone and posted on Facebook and YouTube and how there my message the message of God goes across you know the, the continent and sometimes across the ocean. Even one of the one of the comments this one lady sent me says, I can endure, I can ingest. My spirit has changed me. My house has changed. You are anointed. I said, not me, but God did that. God did that. God did that. Was the church confined? No, maybe somewhat for a short season, right? But uh, but the gospel hit the airwaves. So, so what if the next time the enemy tries another attempt to hamper the scriptures, hamper the, 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 hamper the spread of the gospel by maybe censoring our account, right? But we always have prayer. We have an unlimited uh, data plan through a server far above the cloud <laughs> through a portal that we know as Jesus the firstborn every query that we ever enter into this engine called prayer is never lost and we can be bewildered about this practice of prayer for a variety of reasons right uh but more often, even the, even, even the seasoned prayer warriors, because of our expectation, and we would like to have a quick answer to our prayers and, when it, prayers, and when it doesn't come, our confidence in prayer and the power of prayer sort of wanes. In Acts chapter 2, if you'll remember, when we talked about last week about Pentecost, with the coming, and then Peter preaches his powerful sermon, and 3,000 people are saved. And then it says that they can, the people... They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. But in turn, that added boldness to their witness and their boldness resulted in occasional confrontations with non-believers and confrontations with non-believers eventually led to persecution. There was that line, it's not in the Bible. It says, Think, cheer up, because things can get worse. So I cheered up, and sure enough, things got worse. <laughs> and that happened to the church. Well, we should expect re re resistance, re uh, from not only here on earth, but from the, the heavenly realms. God does not ignore our prayer. So if we're stifled the next time around, and we're censored, no problem. As we saw in this passage about the book of Revelations, that the prayers of the saints are always on the altar of incense, rising up in the presence of those witnesses that are heaven, uh, dwelling in heaven. So we might say, but, but I need answers. I need answers to my prayer. Yes, you will surely say. Joseph, he elevated his request to get out of prison to, through, a, through Pharaoh's cupbearer. And wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't you know, but he expected he'd be released immediately, but he had to wait another two years before he was ever released. So let me read this text about Paul. And Paul, we know, spent much time in confinement as well as in prisons. So I'm reading from Colossians chapter uh, 4, verses 2 through 6. So Paul exhorted the Colossians and us, where he says, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us 
that God may open to us a, a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of your time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that we may know how you ought to answer each person. So Paul appealed to his Roman citizenship when he was being confined and taken to prison. So they put him in prison in Caesarea. And his accusers present their case before Felix. And Felix, after he listens to it, he says, okay, uh, Paul, I'll call on you in, 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 a, in a little while, when I'm ready. Well, Paul languished there in that prison in Caesarea for two years with nothing happening. And finally, Festus replaces Felix. And Festus, after three days, who decides, well, I'm going to clear up the, all my previous, all the duties of, of my previous administration. And so three days later, he calls uh, Paul before him. And Paul, uh, Felix hears Paul's testimony, and he's amazed. And he says, wait, you need to give that testimony. You need to talk about this, pre 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 uh, pre your, your case to King Agrippa when he comes. He's coming pretty soon, and he knows everything about the Jewish nation and the Hebrew of law. So let's, let's hear him, see what his advice is. So Paul, once again, is waiting in prison uh, until Agrippa comes. Another lengthy delay, and finally Agrippa hears his plea, and he gets aside with, uh, with uh, Festus over there and says, this man could have been set free if, we hadn't, if he hadn't appealed to Caesar, but now we have to honor his request. We have to send him to Rome and let him go. So, once again, Paul is shipped off to Rome, and there he is in prison again. But a lot of things are taking place behind the scenes while Paul was sitting in prison. His most glorious epistles, what we call the prison officials, Ephesians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians, were probably written in one of those prison cells, as well as probably some of his pastoral uh, books, such as First and Second Timothy. Well, it wouldn't be surprising to hear that Joseph and Paul were discouraged by the delays that they experienced. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12 says, Hope deferred makes a heart sick, but a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. So those of you who are like me that are waiting for an answer to prayer, an urgent need that we know of, you know, we can get the same way. We can get that same feeling. Downcast. So it's amazing what despair does to us. He read the story about the man that had been an invalid for 38 years, right? And so he's sitting at this pool, and, and supposedly, and, and some of the passages say that this part didn't exist, but supposedly when the water is stirred in that pool, the first one in gets healed. And this man says, I'm, I'm an invalid. Every time I, I try to slip in there over the past 38 years, somebody a little more mobile than me is, lunges in there, and they get sick, and I'm never going to. So the, the interesting thing, though, was that Jesus walks up to him, and he says, would you like to be healed? Now, the answer just has been yes. <laughs> but instead, when somebody is afflicted with despair like that, they've got to give you the pity party story, right? They've got to pour out their whole heart. I, I know if I had been in Jesus' place, I would have been rolling my eyes. Oh, God, how long have I got to listen to this? But no, Jesus is not that way. He listens very patiently. And then he says, pick up your bed and walk. Wow. I said, wow, that's amazing. Jesus knows. See, despair, it's an emotional crippler. That man was also emotionally crippled. Israel was under heavy, uh, under heavy hand of Egypt for a long time, right? In slavery, their prayers went up in the form of cries. In fact, they may not have even prayed; they just cried. So Moses came to them with a word from the Lord, and, and this is these are some of the things that God told him to tell the nation of Israel. This is from Exodus chapter six. 
So God says, tell them, I have heard that I have remembered my covenant. I will deliver you from slavery. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. I will take you to be my people. I will bring you into a land that I swore to Abraham. I will give you the, it as a possession. So Moses went to the, back to the nation of Israel and Egypt, and he said these very words. And this is what it says about the, the nation of Israel. Moses spoke thus to the people of Israel, but they did not listen to Moses because of their broken spirit and harsh slavery. It's almost like that despair of a longing that's unfulfilled causes us to go deaf. Jesus said, do you want to be healed? Yes, the answer was yes. God hears our prayers, even those from the outsiders. It says in, in, in Acts chapter 10 that there was a man named Cornelius, of the, a centurion of the Italian cohort. Praise God for him. And he, God said to him, Go, your prayers and your alms have come up before me. And they've ascended as a memorial. Send for Peter, Simon Peter, because he has something to tell you. And when Peter came there and saw what was taking place and told, proclaimed the gospel, the people were converted. They spoke in tongues as a sign to the fact that God approves of their conversion also. So, sometimes we don't get the answers that we want. We don't get them right away. And it's a challenge. It's, it, it, it causes misery. I mean, I have my own personal experiences. Of that, that, that story about a man that waited for 38 years, that was an invalid for 38 years. When I was at a, uh, in 1969, I was a single man. And uh, I, was, uh, I was, I thought, engaged to a woman that I loved. And I fathered a child before we were married. And once she found out, she said, I'm not going to marry you. And I pleaded for us to do the right thing, that I thought this was the right thing. I thought we were to be and, and married and, and share a life together and raise this child. But it doesn't make any difference how often I pleaded with her. She said no. And then shortly thereafter, she vanished. She could not be found anywhere. Even when the internet came online and I started having access to records, state records, I could not find her. And I'd ask former classmates of hers, because we went to the same high school, I said, do you know where she is? No, we don't know where she is. Uh, so, but anyway, I was, I was heartbroken that I had this child, but shortly thereafter I met the woman that God really intended me to marry. And, um, it, it, would, you know, it turned out to be, I could see God's wisdom in it all. But anyway, I had to tell her about this child. I mean, before we married, I mentioned that to her. And then we had started having a children of our own. And as soon as our children were old enough to understand, I told them about this. And I had known that this child was born in January of 1970. It was a girl, and her name was Kelly. And that's all I knew about her. And I couldn't find her in any way. And I couldn't find the, the woman, her mother. Well, anyway, seven years later, after Kelly is born, I become a Christian, and I start to pray for her. Oh, Lord, help me find Kelly. Now, this story is not about me. I want you to know that. This is a story about somebody else, something else, something bigger. So seven years, I'm, I'm praying. Ten years go by, nothing, find nothing. Every effort that I make, fruitless. Fifteen years go by. 20 years go by. I'm starting to conclude that God does not want me to ever find this young child. Now this child must be 25 years old, probably having a family of her own. So I'm Lord, Lord, I hope Kelly finds a good man. I hope when she raises children, I hope they come to know the Lord. I hope Kelly comes to know the Lord. I really don't know what to expect, Lord, but, and I know you don't want me to find her. So just be, be good to her, Lord. Take care of every her need. And may you bestow upon her every blessing that I would have bestowed upon her as I am bestowing on my own children. And may she be fulfilled. May she have a good day. All those things that a father would pray for his children, even though I knew she was out there somewhere and I didn't know where. 
but I rehearsed. I said, Lord, if she ever, if I ever get, if she ever calls me and gets in touch with me, the very first thing I'm going to say to her is that, Kelly, I have been praying for you for years. So it was uh, 2015, and I've applied for a government job, and I had to get a security clearance, and so I got this phone call this one day, and uh, she starts asking me these very direct questions about where I've been in these different times in my life and who I've known. So I figured this is just somebody investigating me for my security clearance. And then finally this young girl says, Dan, you're my biological father. Uh, Kelly, I've been praying for you for years. And she said, really? I'm a Christian. I'm married to a pastor. And you have three grandchildren, teenagers, who are also Christians. I said, oh, praise God. Praise God. God answers prayer. The answer all that time was not yet. 38 years I prayed for this child. She was 45 years old. And I had three grandkids that were walking with the Lord. God is good. How great thou art. So God's answer sometimes is just not yet. How many generations have gone by when they said, come quickly, Lord Jesus. And he says, not yet. Not yet. So that's an answer. That is an answer. And that may be the answer that you're sitting on right now. You've got to conclude that for yourself. So what's, what's the reason for the not yet? Why does God have to give us a not yet? And we don't even know that that's the answer. We want yes and no. Lord, there's a promotion coming up at the job, uh, pretty soon to the job, and I hope you'll let me have that job. And the answer either comes down a couple of weeks later, yes or no. Or the Lord, help me. And then sometimes there aren't any answers at all. You say, Lord, hi, help me as I go out to select a new automobile. And you go out and say, like the new automobile, right? Or, Lord, give me the patience to deal with my mother today. And you don't know whether you're going to answer or not. And did I do well or not? We don't know. Sometimes those answers don't come. Sometimes they come right away. What for? God only knows. God makes his plan. The information is unavailable to the mortal man. <laughs> One thing I'm rather sure that the lack of prayer in our lives is in some cases is simply because we're like children. I can do it myself. Pride and self-sufficiency. Other times we prayed for something and we did not like God's answers. And, you know, Lord, how about this candidate over this candidate? And not the and the wrong candidate gets elected. Ah, oh, what's the use of praying about this? I'm not gonna pray about elections anymore. Right? Unbelief. Oh, wow. Prayer that is not yet answered is for a purpose of developing perse perseverance. Perseverance. And, that's, and we know, add to your faith perseverance because perseverance lends the hope and that's what we are to do. God's people are to persevere on this planet. That's basically it. So you have persevered through a 90 day period of confinement and it may be imposed upon us once again if something gets bad or for another reason I mean it just seems to me like the end is coming nearer and nearer all the time right and so you know God's people are going to suffer they suffered through this one just like all the non-believers suffered through and something worse could take place insurrection who knows what's going to take place next and God's people will suffer God wants you to persevere God wants you to pray and the answer may be, not yet. Not yet. But prayer is answered. So have you been praying for something? Oh, you know one of the reasons why, why did it take 38 years? Well, the, the child was lied to by her mother. In fact, everybody else in the family, in the peripheral of the family, knew that the man who raised her wasn't her real father, but they never told her. But God, see, had to change somebody's heart first so that person would reveal the truth and tell her. So how, did he start, how long did it take him? 
Did he just wait for 38 years and then finally, boing, you're now under conviction, tell the truth? Or did he work on that person for 38 years and that person kept pushing back, pushing back, pushing back? So are you, is God waiting for you to do something so that he can answer somebody else's prayer? Or is he waiting for you to do something to yield to him so that he can answer your prayer? We don't know. We don't know. But the best thing we can do is comply every time. Every poke in the eye, every touch of the chest, every touch of your heart, every prick of your conscience, we should say, yes, Lord, I shall do it. I will do it. And we don't know what the Lord is going to open up. What vistas will open up for us in our life as believers who have access to the throne, to the throne, where all the power of all creation exists and is always accessible. So, if your answer right now, if you're sitting on a not yet, just keep praying. Just keep praying. Because God is good. I'm ready to listen to sing some more songs. I hope the, the band will come back up here and play out another one for us. God, I just want to pray for you and thank the God. Thank God for his wonderful care of his people. Father, you are a good God. And although we don't always understand what you're doing in our lives, Lord, we have to have faith in that. That is what makes us different. A God in an in, uh, power and faith in an invisible God, but has all the power to do amazing things. And we have seen you do amazing things, Lord, and we're grateful. So help us to persevere because this is what makes us different from the rest of the world. We see now that all people are casting off every restraint and taking things into their own hands as if they can make a change. And we know that that's not the case, Lord. You are the one that changes the king's heart. You are the one that changes our heart. You are the one that makes all things work together for good. And we sit patiently waiting for your answer in all of our situations, Lord. But we thank you that we have confidence in answered prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.